love of justice. One of the most powerful human traits is not physical strength, but abstract convictions regarding our reality as a whole. This is a powerful trait because it determines the course of our reality amid the course of nature. To illustrate this, we can just look at humanity's discovery of abstract concepts such as Einstein's theories of relativity, special relativity and general relativity, and the abstract description of the physical world in quantum theories. These abstract relationships in nature, derived from the most abstract views on natural phenomena, have led to the unlocking of nuclear power, the most powerful energy source humanity has ever been able to tap into. Humanity's abstract ability has unlocked an infinite source of energy. But this is certainly not all that is unlocked by humanity's abstract ability, and although nuclear power is a potent reality of our time, there is another effect that flows from the abstract thinking of humans. Just as the abstract description of the laws of nature has forever changed our world, our description of justice and injustice also has a powerful influence on our everyday lives. From one perspective, it is very clear that there are certainly substantial effects that come from the abstract concept of fear of injustice. A fear of injustice is the fear that you or your group will be wronged. The examples of this type of fear are legion and everyone can make their own list. Just think of someone like David who sang psalms about the fear of injustice he experienced. The times I have cried out my fear of injustice to God along with David are more than I can count. When we look at our current world circumstances, we see nations and peoples trapped in this same type of fear of injustice. It is the fear in the hearts of the Israelis, who see injustice being perpetrated against their people, amid the fear of injustice living in the hearts of the Palestinians. It is the fear that convinces North Koreans they cannot have a safe existence, regardless of the fact that the fear may be a kind of state psychosis from the heart of a dictator, the fear remains real and very dangerous. It is also the fear in the hearts of Iranians who believe that Western powers are conspiring with Saudi Arabia against their religious and theocratic beliefs. It is the fear in the hearts of the Chinese who believe that their access to resources will hinder their progress, amid the fear that the rest of the world has that China's needs will undermine their own needs and goals. It is the fear of injustice being done to people through a loss of freedom of thought, such as state oppression in so many areas. Let your thoughts wander and see how much of this type of fear exists. This type of fear of oppression exists despite the fact that some autocratic rulers still believe that justice can only come from the heart of a ruler and that justice cannot be discovered by any individual. It is the fear of the Africana that our rights to identity and equal opportunities are being actively undermined. That the Africana may not participate based on our most useful character, but is subject to domination. This is amid the fear that Africana's excellence will hinder other people's opportunities for progress. It is the fear that lived in the hearts of the old Israel when Habakkuk told them about Babylonian domination. From these examples, can the nature of this abstract fear of injustice be inferred? One thing becomes clear and that is that this type of injustice is much more than mere survival of an individual. The amount of irrational fears in the world is also certainly not negligible. Why is this trait of being human so powerful and is it really necessary to live in so much fear? Why is it so powerful in the course of human history? This picture is very clearly understandable to all of us, but because fear of injustice is such an obviously negative concept, it can naturally be described just as easily in a completely positive sense. The love of justice. Like David, humanity perhaps also needs to move through our fear and live out our love for justice. The greatest love for justice, logically speaking, is only in the hand of the one who can determine right and wrong. The options that one can consider in this regard are likely one of two, one, self-righteousness, or two, external righteousness, which can be discovered. The origin of our awareness of right and wrong is a fundamental question, which has been described throughout the ages in terms of the nature of our reality. We believe with good reason for example in one, a God who is the creator and sustainer of the universe, this is the total reality, i.e., a theistic view, or two, we believe in a God who created and completely withdrew, i.e., a deistic view, or three, we perhaps believe in a reality that simply is, i.e., an atheistic view. With this complexity and potential uncertainty regarding the nature and origin of right and wrong in mind, 
our work still only deals with the simple and practical question. Does justice come from man's subjective abstract convictions or is it discovered by man as it exists in itself and objectively? In this question is a great key to a true love for justice, because if we can share a belief that justice is greater than any individual or group of people, then we can collectively seek it. From personal experience, I can only speak of my own discovery of the justice that is in God, the loving and involved creator and savior of mankind. This particular justice can only come from God himself and cannot be acquired by a human. It is a state of being that opens the essence of a Christian to the complete discovery of justice in all possible states and abstractions of thoughts about our reality. This does not mean that man is a perfect being, but that we are made a perfect being in every choice we take in God's righteousness. It is in God's heart to free any person, Christian or not, to discover his divine righteousness. I am convinced that this process of discovering justice will forever be new in our being. An eternal discovery of the perfect being of God. Therefore, I can testify that my righteousness in Christ gives me the boldness to engage with any person or even any possible idea, abstraction or belief about our reality in conversation with the aim of expressing my love for justice towards God and man. This includes the search for a just solution to all fears, which also includes our fears of the powerful effects of nuclear power. It is therefore of cardinal importance that people who perhaps do not even believe in universal justice are still invited to examine their conviction, even if it is only to achieve local justice. Because the invitation to a search for mutual justice often does not succeed, attention must be paid to the fact that something new has entered the course of mankind. It has to do with the ability to exercise physical power over people. The terrifying wonder of nuclear power actually ensures that any group, large or small, in principle, must carefully consider their fear of injustice. The reason for this is, of course, the necessary nature of justice that is based in the agreement for the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. Humanity subjects itself to preventing the spread of nuclear weapons only because there is a kind of agreement of universal protection of rights and justice between nations. At this moment, this agreement of power from nuclear weapons to enforce universal respect and ensure justice is being tested by Iran, North Korea, and even Brexit, 9-11, and various global trade disputes, various development goals and disputes, Greece, Italy, Spain's financial system, Brazil and South Africa, and other corruption disputes and refugees in and around Europe and, and, and. And still, the world's views on fears of injustice and also love for justice are being intensely tested. This should create a terrifying picture for any person, so we can only pray and believe that mutual respect and the search for justice will benefit mankind. May God spare us. May the heart of Christ through the workings of the Holy Spirit keep us safe. Come Lord Jesus come soon. Therefore, I conclude this thought by noting that the powerful energy of nuclear power can truly be harnessed by people who have a genuine love for justice. Nuclear power has the ability to make the earth a clean, sustainable garden of life, but people's fears keep this possibility veiled for most people. It is sad that nuclear power came into man's hand at a time when fear of injustice was and is the norm, but the influence of Christ through the ages has always driven out fear of injustice. May every person sincerely seek justice and the grace of God our Father light our path.